right to the stage. An incredible, power-packed, unique, and really interesting group of women who are living proof that age is no barrier to looking, feeling great, and being in demand as well. Come to the stage, everybody. I feel that these people don't really need introducing. You've already met the amazing George Lee, who is an aging activist, an anti-aging activist. Um, we've had a bonding moment backstage because I first saw the incredible Andy Oliver in 1982 when she was in fact a singer with Rip Rick and Panic. <laughs> she's an amazing multi-hyphenate. She's a, a, a chef, a writer, an author, a TV presenter, and just She's pure gold, this woman, I love her. <laughs> and on the other side, the incredible Val Garland, who all of you will know, and, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Val, we've all known as being one of the most in-demand makeup artists in the world, for magazines and uh, incredible catwalk shows. She has also reinvented herself in midlife as being a global TV phenomenon as well. <laughs> and then, of course, award-winning, Ding dong. Yes. Actor and from 2014, face of L'Oreal Paris, Dame Helen Mirren as well. So let's start with some general questions. Feel free to pick up your mics, everybody. You look good for your age, compliment or caveat, and I'll, I'll ask you, Helen. Oh, definitely caveat. <laughs> definitely. I mean, um... Of course, the other thing I get quite a lot is, oh, you're much better looking in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Which is another one. But no, uh, no, absolutely, you know, um, the age you are, whether you're, um, you know, 25 or 45 or 85, um, you are who you are, but, and, and you look, look great for who you are, not for how old you are. How? <laughs> Um, I think, you know, you look good for your age. Yeah, I look good, period. <laughs> ding dong, darling. I don't want to question it. I wonder how long it's been called the ding dong came out. <laughs> Andy, we've already heard your views. That's part of the amazing yes. campaign, but tell us a little bit more. Well, I just, I mean, the first thing that always pops in, into my head when people say that is this, what did you think I was going to look like? Yeah. <laughs> this is how we look. We're fabulous. If there isn't some sort of weird cut-off point, uh, you know, after the age of 27 or something, where you suddenly just start to go downhill. In fact, for me, it's been the opposite. The older I get, the more I step into my beauty, my power, my sense of self, and, and who I really, truly am. So for your age, it's just a bit, it's a sort of, it's an added, added extra that we don't need, thanks. I did not send for you. <laughs> Thank you. And what age were you, probably Helen, this is a good question for you, because I feel probably you work in, in what was traditionally, and I hope is changing, the most traditionally ageist industry. What age were you when you first felt judged for your age rather than your abilities or your achievements? It is a sort of uncomfortable moment when you realize in, in my industry, oh, they didn't want me because I was good. They wanted me because I was young. And there is a moment when you realize that. And I guess that hits you around about mid-30s. Um, and, and it's a, you know, it, especially for me in my mid-30s, because that was now, what, 30 years ago? No, 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 um, no just ago. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it was a whole different um, attitude and understanding in those days anyway. So that was a kind of an awful, a pretty awful moment, actually. I don't think that's the case anymore. I, th I think life has considerably changed um, for all kinds of reasons. But um, yeah, that that was a dodgy moment. Um, and Do you feel a pioneer for that reason? Do you feel I no? I don't, I think I just feel lucky, honestly, that that mm -hmm. I hit that age at a time when things were changing anyway. Um, I did a series called Prime Suspect, which was, and I was very lucky yes, because, I, you know, I was, uh, and I was in my 40s, and, uh, and that's always a very difficult moment for actresses, moving from your beautiful young freshness into your maturity, and the mature side is not allowed, not interesting, don't want that, thank you very much. We just want young, fresh females. We don't want 
intelligent, smart, you know, productive women. Um, so that was the sort of extremely uh, sexist and ageist world that I grew up in. Um, anyway, I was lucky with Prime Suspect, it allowed me to move into that other world. Um, and I can't remember, <laughs> I completely forgot why I started that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you were saying you feel lucky rather than being a pioneer. So you do feel yes, Oh yes, that's what I was going to say. That at the same time as me doing that, women, because of post-war uh, and socialism, I have to say to a certain extent, women were, had gone into universities and they'd gone into training as lawyers and they'd gone into training as doctors and they'd gone through all the sexism that they had encountered and they'd come out the other end and they'd gone into the professions and then they'd encountered all that sexism and now they were in their 50s and they'd done very well in their professions. Um, and, um, and something like Prime Suspect came along and, and, and revealed to the world what women had been um, dealing with. Um, and, and it's my, my constant mantra is, um, well, I have many mantras, but the main one is fight for women in, in public life, fight for women in politics, fight for women in, in all of the professions, and the more you have the, 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 the women in, in those roles, the more life will change for the rest of us. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, talking about women there and the, the innate sexism and combined with ageism, do you think men ever get for your age Val Garland? Is ageing a different issue for men? I think actually it is because um, with a man it's like, oh, he looks really good. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that sort of like graying sort of like temple thing. It's never like, you look good for your age. It's kind of like, oh, he looks amazing. <laughs> Old grey fox. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Andrew Dempsey just been um, named Sexiest Man of the Year, US magazine, US People magazine's Sexiest Man of the Year. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean... I saw a film of him dancing the other day. They clearly haven't watched that. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. What do you think, Andy? Is ageing a different process for men? Is ageing I think ageing is a different process for men because the world expects different things from men and from women, you know. Um, I, think the, I think one of the things that happens is the world is scared of women as we get older because we get more powerful. And the more powerful we are, the more the world tries to contain us and put us back in some kind of box, which obviously is not really going to happen at this point. It's like, what's around the box, around the box, right? Um, for men, they're already expected to be powerful. They're already expected to take up that space. So it just seems like a kind of natural, uh, they're taking up a natural position. And so how they look and behave with that power. I mean, a man can look absolutely exhausted and, you know, like, like some like been hit shit. by a truck, like shit, thank you. Um, and, and still, there, there, there's an attraction to that power and people will still, nobody will comment on the fact that maybe he could do with a bath and cream his skin and drink some water and all of that stuff, right? If a woman walked around at that age look, with, with no self-care, do you, can you imagine, you know, there's a picture of one, maybe she hasn't um, shaved under her armpits. It makes the newspapers, for God's sake. Yeah. You know, men can walk around looking like rough, as you like, frankly. And, uh, and, and, and the world will, will accept it differently. George, you were mentioning backstage earlier on about the tropes of older women and how from a very young age through nursery rhymes and Disney characters. Explain this because this is fascinating. Yeah, so I mean it is really, really, really fascinating. I mean, so um, when, when, when we're young, the, the, the images that, that we see of older women are invariably the wicked, the wicked haggard witch, you know, the, the, the sort of wizened old woman handing Snow White the, um, the red apple, or even things like old Mother Hubbard, you know, this mad crazy woman who lives in the shoe. Um, so these, 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 you know, I, I mentioned in my, sort of my, my little preamble, is that we have from a very early age these negative messages about getting older. 
And of course, they're all sort of like terrifying, and, and we, 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 we fear it. But it's really interesting, actually. I just hadn't really thought about it. I mean, if you think about, well, actually, we did, we mentioned about like Gandalf, the wise old yeah. wizard, right? Okay, so, you know, um, so older men, older, older men are seen in those runs as, as incredibly strong and powerful, but from, from but women are in, in right from, you know, when we're, you know, in just, in, you know, in nappies, we are told these images. So no wonder it's difficult for women to, to not be scared about, about, about getting older. So, you know, it is, it is, that's why I say it's a personal battle. It really is, we have to be conscious about it. And it's, it, it's not going to be and easy to have this awful phrase, and, and thank, thank you, L'Oreal, for rejecting this phrase, anti-aging. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Yes. so you know, and I was like, yes. I mean, a lot of beauty brands still use that in their the own majority. Marketing. The majority. L'Oreal's uh, Paris genuinely is standing on the shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to get older. It's fantastic. Yeah. But, you know, Helen, I, I, I came across a figure yesterday. It's a two trillion pound business, right? And anti this, and, yeah, anti-aging. And, and and this is the, this is the problem. You know, this is we need. To, this is why it's so wonderful about this. We need to show there is money being made for living well at every single stage yes, of our lives. Yes, and enjoying who you are yeah. and realizing you are. You don't. You, you know, it's not you're turning a blind eye to it, and and loving it and celebrating it. Um, I was very lucky. In, in my whole aging process, because my mum was was actually uh, was very wise, and she always said to me, "Darling, never worry about getting older. When you're 40, the thought of being uh, well, sorry, when you're 20, the thought of being 40 is like, oh my God, how terrible. Or when you're 40, the thought of being 60, and so on and so forth. But she said, don't worry, because you'll find when you get to be 40, you won't want to be 20 again, because yeah. you've got wonderful advantages." You've lost certain things, but you've gained an awful lot more. And she said, it'll be like that for, for all through your life. And I have to say that is absolutely true, that of course you lose some things, but you gain a whole lot of other things. And, and you know, we just celebrate it. Don't fight it. You know, you die young or you get old. I don't want to die young. I'm too interested in life. Life is wonderful. So, you know, Celebrate that, enjoy it. Do you feel that this panel, and in fact each of your careers, would it have been possible 10 or 20 years ago, or do you think we are living at a tipping point where finally women are being celebrated for the aging process? Val, well, what do you think? I mean, this, as a woman that has just gone global on television, and when I met you four or five years ago when you first signed to L'Oreal, you had no idea this second renaissance was coming. No idea at all. I think we are in such a great position right now as women um, because we are being celebrated for our knowledge, our experience, most of the time. Most of the time. But I think it's definitely we're on our way. And, you know, there are things that you lose along the way as um, you age, but there's also a lot that you gain. And one thing is for sure, the sex gets better. <laughs> it absolutely does. Trust me. Is that the secret to the glow up? Do you know? Oh, I mean, but also the rosy glow that you have. Absolutely, because also I think um, what keeps you young, what keeps you relevant is laughing, laughing at yourself, laughing, um, loving, living, being positive, always looking on the positive side. Um, and an orgasm a day keeps the doctor <laughs> Also, that your age never stopped you uh, in, no. in the same way. No. You know, that you didn't think, oh, I can't do that because, you know, I, I, I'm not. too old to be doing it just that, or too old to be wearing that, or no, too old absolutely. to be, you know, talking like this. Absolutely. It's, uh, absolutely. We it's were chatting about this earlier on. We hate the fact that people are telling us that we should dress I pretty mean, yeah. or have our hairstyles what? at a certain age. We don't like being told. I don't like being told. Do. I've never liked being told. If my dad was really bossy, I've never really liked people telling me what to do. He's from the time I was a kid, and I'm certainly not going to start doing it now. You know, there's weird articles of what women over 50 should wear. So how would you know? And why are you talking to me? You know what I mean? Do you feel more in demand than ever before, Helen? Do you feel that you're
your career goes from peak to peak? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's just, I'm just trudging on. <laughs> It doesn't look like that from the outside, I just say it. <laughs> but, um, you, you know, I, I, it's always been, in, in my whole career, it's the thing that has scared me the most, is the thing that I feel I should do. You know, the thing that looks like the most dangerous, and the most, um, you know, the, the one that, the thing that I'm most likely to fail at, is the thing that I should jump into and, and attempt, you know. If I fail or not, it, it doesn't really matter. I think it's the, it, it's the, um, you know, it's the journey rather than the ar arrival, as they say. You know, so so put yourself on an interesting journey if you possibly can. And do you feel that as you've grown older, because I feel this, and I'm sure that Val and Andy and George would say the same thing, the fear becomes a little less, but it's important to still challenge yourself by doing things that. Just I don't know the fear gets less. No, no. No, I'm still shit scared every time I do. I think you just know it won't kill you. <laughs> yes. you yeah, 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 that's you true. Know it kill you. That's but when you're young, sometimes when you're scared of things, you just think, well, I mean, I might just die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd just be too much, and I'll just pass like flat on the stage of the old picture. I think you learn how to handle your fear. Yeah. I guess that's what it is. And, and, and you learn, as you get older, you learn that every, it, it becomes less about yourself, which is one of the great advantages of getting older is you're not so self-concerned all the time. It's not all about you. It becomes about the wider world. And it's so much more interesting than when it's all about you, you know. Um, you know, you look outward much more than you look inward, I think. I agree completely, yes. Yeah. It's when you're young, you feel that the whole world is looking at you, and then when you get older, you realise they're not that they're interested. They're not that interested. <laughs> they're really not that interested. Yeah. They're too busy worrying about their own cellulite, yeah. or lines, or spots, or grey yeah. hairs. They're really not that interested yeah. in you. And that is completely liberating, you're right. Yes, it is. Now, Val, I have to ask you, as probably someone that works in a pretty ageist world, you've obviously grown up through magazines and fashion shows where youth is absolutely fetishised and celebrated. Do you feel that things have changed in the last five years? Do you think there are positive steps happening? Oh, absolutely. I think, yes, it's, you know, it's changed uh, 360. I mean, it's not just youth orientated anymore. It's open to all of us, of every demographic. And I think that's amazing. I mean, I think we have, you know, photographers like Rankin, you know, Nick Knight, that like really embrace all ages, you know, all races, all demographics, etc. And I think it's a great thing. I think it's interesting when we talk about uh, inclusivity and diversity. Now, traditionally, we haven't included age within that, but I think the minute we frame it within a wider argument of inclusivity and diversity, suddenly it makes sense. And I, I remember somebody saying to me, which I think is really interesting, is for anybody out there that suspects deep down inside they might be a little bit ageist and I think when we're young we're pretty much all a little bit ageist and a little bit frightened about being older, getting older, is think that ageism is the only form of discrimination that targets the future you. And that's truly shocking because, you know, all of the things we've ha seen happen about inclusivity and, and diversity, it seems to be not necessarily about everybody but the aim in this room should be to grow old because the alternative is not that pleasant obviously and if you're going to grow old then every time you feel yourself have an ageist thought or you see yourself or think utter an, an ageist thought or sentence remember that you're targeting your future because you will get older and what did you say after that Andy when I said we're all going to get older and so damn quickly yes it happens really fast it, it happens so <laughs> oh, shit but I remember when my menopause kicked in, I remember thinking, oh, you met me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, met everybody else. <laughs> you know, because you don't, you yeah. just can't conceive of yourself as older when you're really young. It's really hard to kind of One of the out. questions I asked was, how old is the inner you? How old is the inner you, Andy? I was well, asking so, that. Sometimes about 12. Yes. Yesterday I was every 12. My mum was there, my uncle was there, annoying me. I was like, nah, nah, nah. Um, today, today 
about, I think I'm 60 inside and out because of the conversation we're having. Tomorrow I might be 30, I don't know. It definitely does change. I'm often quite young inside, I think. I want to interrupt because I want to say that we've got to, we are what we think. And, you know, we need to think the right thought. So I am not going to grow old. I am not going to grow old. I'm going to grow more. And that's what I think we should think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that also follows up on what you think as well. Yes, I've always said, I don't, I, well, I'm not growing old, I'm growing up. Yeah. You know, in other words, I'm, I'm learning more about life and, and how to live life. And I think in terms of how old you feel, I was thinking about this earlier when you said that, oh, I guess I feel about my mid-30s. But that's not true. I feel the age that I am, you know, with all the curiosity I have about life, the knowledge I have about life, the fear I have about life, the, um, you know, I feel in, I feel my age, but in the, and in the fullest possible sense, I guess. I love, I love being the age I am. Uh, uh, you know, it's great. So, do, you know, do, why would I want to be someone else? I don't. And do we not, I mean, I feel like I'm in, you know, I'm inhabited by all my younger selves. And yeah, that's why I am the sum of my parts, you know, mm. I'm 60 and I've been all those other ages and she is alive and well yes. and kicking inside of me yeah. at every single yeah. point. It's all still there, so it's all there, every actually. now and again you get a flurry of something, but I mean, I, I, I don't... Is that back to Val Garland again? Her well, what, what, that kind of flurry. <laughs> but many, many flurries. I went one today, but hey, the day is young. I do. I do. I do think also that we don't necessarily be, need to be scared of the word old. Mm -hmm. It's that we, we conflate the word old with decay and with death and with disappearing and vanishing. But actually, you know, as, as you said earlier, it's about wisdom yeah. and confidence and empowerment and all of those things are come up, that's what that's what getting older means. I also want to bring up another conversation we had backstage which was fascinating, which was for every woman out there that thinks that getting older means being invisible. Yes. Over to you, Andy. Well, so I've had the absolute opposite experience of that. The older I've got, a bit like you, Val, with suddenly this sort of other career appearing out of nowhere, the older I've got, the more successful I've become, sort of externally, you know, perceptions of my own success and the more visible I get. I feel more visible now than I did when I was in my 20s. And we were all like churning around in the WAC club, you know, sort of on top of each other. Um, and I, I feel, because I feel like I, I can take up the space that I wish to, and I feel happy to take that space up and demand it for myself as my right and my future and my power, and I will do as I please, thank you. You know, in a, in a very calm way, you know, that, that used to come from a quite a kind of angry, fearful place when I was much younger. And at this point in my life, I just feel tall. I mean, I'm not, but I feel tall. <laughs> my mate's in the back laughing, that's why I had to just give you that camera. But I feel tall and powerful. When I say tall, I just mean that, you know, I can take I the space I want. I also, and this is my theory of a very famous actor called John Gilgood. Oh, love John. now always said, it's all in the spine. Mm -hmm. And you know that's very true, and I yeah. want you all to do something right now, which I just want you all to sit up. Yeah. And the energy in this room <laughs> immediately changes. It's amazing. You don't have to stick with it. But, <laughs> but that feeling of taking my space, I'm taking my space, this is my space, and I'm filling it up, as you were saying. It's lovely. It makes an enormous difference. So as you travel through life, and some of you are very young, I see a very young one there, um, <laughs> just be aware that, you know, keep taking your space. Just don't let anyone else take your space from you. It's your space. You're the only one in the world like you. There's no one else in the world like you. You're literally one of a kind. Take your space and maintain it. Yes. <laughs> what aging stereotypes do you want to dispel, Val Garland? Any more sex talk? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, there's always more sex talk to um, What do I want to dispel? Well, you know, I don't like it when people like to say, oh, you're having a senior moment. Mm. How dare you? How dare you? Dare you? <laughs> yeah, I've misplaced my car keys. You know, but it's not always a senior moment. It's because you're balancing about four different careers and you're never more successful than you are in this moment. Exactly. So, yes, you know, that's what I would want to dispel. Helen? Um, I agree with that, absolutely. You know, I, you know, every day of your life, you have more stuff to remember. Now I have to remember this panel for the rest of my life. But you know what I mean? Every day of your life, you have experiences that are now going into this amazing, unbelievable computer that is your brain. And your, your brain is taking it all in, remembering it. Of course you're going to start forgetting stuff, because there's so much stuff in there. But, um, so what, what was the question? What, what ages what, sort of thing do I want to dispel? What sort of stereotypes of getting older do you want to dispel? Um, oh gosh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. What one? What about that one where they say to you, like, are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody sure? really say that? Are you sure you want to wear yeah. that? Or, um, do you really want to wear a bright red lipstick? Yeah. And you're kind of like, yes, yes. yes I do. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's good to break the rules, yeah. isn't it? Just, you know, be a rule breaker breaker is always a good idea. And what about you, Andy? Um, I think... The idea that you will feel less sexy or less happy in your body is, is you know, it's a, it's a great disservice because, the, you see, because there's this industry that we're talking about, this industry that runs on the fear of getting older, um, so, the, you know, there's, in, there's an invested commercial <laughs> assault on us that to expect, to, to, to put us in fear of the fact that we're not going to feel gorgeous anymore, we won't ever feel fabulous. You go, you know, you're going to go to a party, you'll feel like the kind of wallflower. I absolutely have the opposite experience of that. I'm the, but I feel the most attractive I've ever felt in my life. I feel the batty is nice. I'm feeling really, really great about myself. And the more com most confident I've ever felt in my life. And I think the expectation is actually that you'll feel the opposite of that. And I think it, it, it's, it's a terrible disservice for people. And it hangs over your head like some sort of sword of Damocles thing. And it's just bullshit. It's, not, it's a nonsense. I couldn't agree more. I, I feel more visible and more successful yeah. and more appreciated and valued than I've ever felt before. Because I value myself and I appreciate myself more. You know, you show the world how to treat you by the way you treat yourself. If you treat yourself like shit, then they will all treat you like shit. Yeah. So it's a cliche question because we are coming to the end of the panel and we could be here all day because aren't they fabulous people? Um, but it's a cliche question. What advice would you give to your younger self about getting older? About getting older? Um, well, I think I would say to my younger self, um, dream big, have no fears, wear SPF. <laughs> you know, um, and just, you know, I think I would sort of say, you know, believe that you can, just go and do it. I always thought, like, well, if I fail, it doesn't matter because I can start again. You just. It's your positivity you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, dust yourself you? off and yeah. go again and keep that with you all of your life and ding dong, we'll be there. We'll be old. Tell yeah. what about you? Um, don't smoke, <laughs> uh, SPF, but also don't smoke. Terrible smoking for everything. Um, also, I used the phrase already, already earlier today. Learn this phrase, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Quote of the time. <laughs> I mean, I don't really want to say after that because I so agree with you. Um, I think have faith in yourself. Trust. You have a great ass, by the way, young girl. Trust it. Yeah. So true. Trust it. Trust it. Enjoy your body. Enjoy yourself. Have faith in yourself and just keep doing exactly what you want to do. Say the yeses to your self. Listen to your heart.
Does your heart will steer you right? Now we are here with L'Oreal Paris, so I need to ask you, what's your, what, what is, I mean, you do have phenomenal skin. It doesn't, make, it doesn't matter how old you are, Andy Oliver. What's your skin secret? Be honest. Be honest. And um, then tell me about what's happened since you've signed to L'Oreal as right. well. So, the, in, in our culture, there's a saying that says, drink your water and mind your business, <laughs> right? And that will keep you looking good, it will keep you happy, and it will keep you just like in a place of peace, which is what we all want, right? We all just want a little bit of chill internally. I have never really consciously looked after my skin or thought about that stuff, because I've always just been a bit of an, a haphazard person. As I've got older, the last couple of years, I've started to do nice things for myself, because I've started to understand that I'm allowed to. I never really thought I was, you know, I would do lovely things for other people. So very recently, I bought myself a really fancy coat which I've just worn for the first time today. Really, really free. I had to get five people. I had to have a, had to have a panel to allow me to buy myself a really expensive coat. Because I couldn't handle it, it just really, really stressed me out. And, and this is the absolute truth, I have started using it. You started using serum? Because the serum, because it's just like doing things for yourself that nourish you externally and internally. So keep the good people around you, put the good stuff on your skin, drink your water, mind your business, use your serum, show yourself out. <laughs> Midnight serum in our hand. Right? <laughs> uh, now, Val, much as we say that uh, we should embrace getting older, and we do, our skin does change and our makeup's needs change. If that makes sense. What have you got in your hand? In my hand, I've got the True Match Serum, which is like a cross between uh, skincare and a foundation. It's really fantastic because as we age, um, our skin drinks moisture. So we need, we need something that's a little lighter. What's great about this product is that, you know, it doesn't sink into the wrinkles. It's got 1% hyaluronic acid in it. It's just a fantastic, really quick, easy to use foundation skincare product. I really rate this. It's major. <laughs> it's it's fantastic. It's absolutely brilliant. It's such a good product. And you can apply it the way you just apply skincare. You don't really need any skills. You don't apply. need a brush. You don't need a sponge. You don't need a makeup artist. It. It's amazing. You see, for someone like me, that's because I am not a, I don't do any of this stuff for myself. I have to have something that's easy. So using the serum thing at night is perfect for me, and something like that is perfect because you just whack perfect it on. Combo. I like things you whack on. Yeah. And then me too, Del. I like whack on. And then you, I like whack on. Also, you, like, Helen, you've spoken <laughs> openly about being really low maintenance, hating the time in the makeup chair and all that sort of stuff. But I feel that your hair is your celebration. What what changes yeah. have you been through with your hair? Well, the thing is, I I I just I don't uh, ever obey any rules of any sort and I love makeup I love it you know I love the way mascara can completely just make your face look different I love a great product and I, I've, I'm, I'm not aware of that that's fabulous um, you know lip, I just love playing around I think that's my actressy thing you know um, and I'm constantly wearing things that are completely, if you like, inappropriate. <laughs> but, uh, but I love, just love sort of shaking it up. And, and certainly hair, uh, you know, we all have different, you know, different hair, all of us. I love the fact that, um, and I've been a sort of forefront in that, of, of just letting your hair do its thing and not being a, a slave to sort of the, um, having a, your roots done and all the rest of it. But also, but for some people, that's absolutely great. So I'm not making any rules for anyone. Really. But also, those silly rules about being a certain age and chopping all your hair off. I love that you then grew your hair. I and did deliberately. Dyed your blue hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, don't, I grew it long deliberately because I knew it was an unacceptable thing for old women with long grey hair. <laughs> you know, so I like, fuck it. <laughs> I was actually about to say you are the embodiment of fuck off. Fuck off to that one. Um, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and sadly, we've run out of time, but we could be here all day. I did say that these women were the embodiment of the power surge that comes as you get older. You really are an inspiration for all of us. So thank you. You are certainly an inspiration for me. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the absolutely wonderful, age-diverse and brilliant panel. Thank you, Val. Stepping in. Yeah.